According to the CAPM or Capital Asset Pricing Model, the expected return that you can get on a stock depends on the risk-free rate plus the market risk premium scaled by a factor called beta, which measures the market risk of the stock that you're analyzing. In the real world, a proxy for the risk-free rate is given by the yield on 10-year government bonds. That is currently 1.7% in the US and 0.8% in the UK. They are considered risk-free because the probability, say, that the US government defaults and isn't able to pay your a return of 1.7% per year is really small, so the risk is considered negligible. The market risk premium is the difference between what you can expect to earn on average if you invest in a broad market index and what you could instead get if you invested all your capital in government bonds only, which are the safe alternative. It's like the expected reward for taking the extra risk. In practice, the expected return on the stock market is approximated by the average historical return and that index is usually the standard in Port 500 if you are analyzing a US stock. By looking at the formula, we see that the market risk premium has a direct impact on the expected return of the stock. But by how much? Well, that depends on the value of beta. This factor measures by how much the stock moves when the market index moves up or down. A beta of 1 means that the stock moves exactly like the market in both directions. A beta greater than 1 shows that the stock moves more aggressively with respect to the market, so it gives you more upside potential when markets are in bullish territory, but it also carries a higher risk of losing money in a market downturn. Finally, a beta smaller than 1 indicates that the stock is more defensive than the market. So it will lose you less money in a market downturn, but it also gives you less upside potential when things go well. Can beta be negative? Short answer is yes. There are some assets which are negatively correlated with the market. So they go up uh, in a recession when markets are down, and they typically lose money when markets are up. Gold and precious metals in general are an example of such assets. The CAPM formula can also be drawn as a line in a space where we put the expected return on the vertical axis and the beta on the horizontal axis. We call this the security market line and it tells me for any level of beta what the fair value expected return on any stock should be according to the CAPM model. This is also a tool to check whether a security is mispriced by the market. So let's try with an example. Let's try to price Amazon using the CAPM. We can easily find the beta of Amazon if we Google it. Uh, I found the number of Bloomberg and that is 1.2. Then we need to find the proxy for the expected market return. And I used uh, historical average return on the Standard & Poor's 500 considering the past 20 years. And that number is 15%. So now we have all the information. And if we plug these numbers into the formula, we will see that the expected return on Amazon should be around 15% according to the CAPM. Then we can compare this theoretical number with the actual average return using historical data. So if we go back 20 years and we calculate what the average return on Amazon is, we will find that that number is 79%, which is much higher than the 15% that we got out of the CAPM. That tells me that the stock is undervalued because for that level of beta is giving me a much higher return, a much higher compensation for its market risk. So we can go back to the security market line and plot all the stocks in the world into this space and see whether they fall above the line or under the line. All the stocks which are above the line are undervalued and all the stocks which are beneath the line are overvalued. Consider as an example a stock with a beta of 1, so exactly as risky as the market. Now imagine that it gives you an expected return which is lower. In that case, the security is overvalued because it's not able to giving you enough compensation for the risk that you are taking and you'd be much better off investing in the broad index via an index fund that tracks the standard in Poor's 500 rather than taking a position into that stock. The CAPM model is based on a long set of assumptions, some more realistic than others. What you should remember is that it has two main practical applications in real life. It is used to find the cost of equity 
for a stock for valuation purposes and it's also used to decide whether a stock should be included into a diversified portfolio or not. If you already have a diversified portfolio of 30 to 40 stock then the specific risk related to each company is already pretty small because you have uh, small positions and you are diversified. So in that case the only risk that matters is the risk associated with the wider economy with the wider market index and that will be measured by data so that was all for today i hope that you found this video useful if you feel like you learned something please leave a like and share it i thank you so much for watching this part and i'll see you in the next one